Sometimes people ask me about whether it's necessary to do the breathing aspect of a PRI technique while doing the exercise or the technique itself. Uh, and there, I understand the question because sometimes people are like, I don't like to do the breathing part. It's just too much to think about or it just takes too much time. I just want to do the, the muscle part. But in reality, you can't separate the two. Movement and breathing are intimately linked because really breathing is movement. So even when you're at rest, perfectly at rest, when you're breathing, your body is moving. Not only that, if you're upright, especially if you're upright, but any type of posture, any type of position that requires you to be at least slightly active will introduce some sort of muscular action into that activity. So even when you're resting, your muscles are still on. Uh, I don't know about when you're sleeping. That would be an interesting, uh, that would be an interesting thing to look up because I've never actually checked that. But anytime you're just, even if you're just sitting in a particular position, in order to hold yourself into that position, there should be some muscle activity going on. Breathing and movement are not coupled in the sense that every time we take a step, we don't have to take a breath. I think there are animals, I think animals, at least some animals do have to do that. So every time they take a step or move, there's a breath at the same time. But in humans, it's, it's decoupled. However, the muscles that are being used for movement are also a lot of the muscles that will be overused when you can't use your diaphragm, particularly on the left, to actually breathe. So if you lose your left diaphragm, what we call that left COA area, if you lose that, you will start to use substitute muscles. You will start to use compensatory muscles to help get air in. And that's going to be, it could be any muscle that attaches to your rib cage could potentially try to help you breathe. The QLs could help you try to breathe. The neck muscles, definitely. Uh, other back muscles that arch you. Um, what else? Those are the main ones, the neck and the lower back. Those muscles that will help you try to breathe are also muscles that have to stabilize and move you. So if you lose the ability to breathe with your diaphragm, it's going to lead to compensatory breathing patterns and thus compensatory movement patterns. They're not, dis they're, they're not disconnected even though they're not coupled. Yeah, I guess that's a good way to say it. They're completely connected muscularly and fascially, even though they're not coupled. We don't have to go one step for one breath. It's, I, there are studies on that. I think it's like three or four steps for each breath, I think, something along those lines. The point is, it's all the same musculature. So if you look at this picture that you're gonna see, it's of, the, of a dissection. I've, seen, I've shown it in some different, uh, in some different videos. But you'll see that the iliacus, the QL, the psoas, and the diaphragm are all interconnected. When you go into, here's the left side, if you go into the left AIC pattern, that psoas on the left side, the hip flexor, will be overactive. It will be it'll also turn your left leg out, so the left into external rotation, which it's supposed to do. So the left psoas, once you're in this pattern, is overactive. The psoas, if it's tight, it attaches to the diaphragm. Not only if it's tight, it does attach to the diaphragm. They're, very, they're almost inseparable. And if you watch the video, and I'll put the link in, if you watch the video, the guy, the, the, the guy tugs on the psoas and the diaphragm is moving. He's making a point. These are essentially the same muscle. So if the psoas is tight, we know the diaphragm is going to be tight as well. And when the diaphragm is tight, remember we're talking about the left side, if the diaphragm is tight, it loses its ability to pump as a breathing muscle. And once that happens, you lose that left diaphragm, you're no longer using that left diaphragm to breathe, the rib cage can expand because it's the downward movement of the diaphragm that expands. This rib cage has to expand in all directions during inhalation but it can't if it's extended. So if the pelvis goes forward on the left, left AIC pattern, again, it can do it on the right side also, but underneath all of us, whether you're a PC or a P, I'm sorry, PEC or a patho PEC, whatever, it doesn't really matter. 
Underneath that is still this ingrained left AIC pattern. That's what's important to remember. So however this pelvis falls forward on the left, it will generally lead to a rib flare on the left side. Your lower back will arch. You go into extension. When that occurs, the diaphragm on the left gets tight. It loses its shape as a dome. It has to be in a dome shape to pump because once this happens, extension, that normal dome shape becomes more diagonal and now there's nowhere to go. It can't pump. And if the diaphragm can't pump, the rib cage can't expand with air. If the rib cage can't expand with air out to the side and front and back, how are you going to get air in? Well, you're going to use your neck to lift your shoulders up, to lift the rib cage up, to try to get more air in. And now you've got the scalenes and the SCM and the upper trap all involved. So all of this accessory muscle then locks you into this pattern, right TMCC, right BC pattern. You're going to over to the right side. This is my right. And none of that will be resolved unless you can get that diaphragm back into a domed position, which will then relax the QL, which will then relax the psoas, and will put the iliacus back in a position where it can actually work as a functioning muscle. Would the iliacus be tight? Uh, part of it might be. I think that's on the right side, but I have to recheck. Regardless, extension, no matter how you end up in it, is going to, on the left side, is going to result in a tight diaphragm that can't pump, a tight QL on that left side and the right, but a tight QL, which is associated with extension, uh, a tight psoas, and a iliacus that can't fulfill its job of what it needs to do, which is moving and stabilizing the pelvis on the inside. So you can't just you can't just try to fix breathing without taking into consideration movement. If you're not stable, no matter what you do with breathing, even if you by chance do expand your rib cage, the moment you're upright and walking around and that pelvis falls back into the pattern because it's unstable, you're just going to go back into extension again and nothing changes. So you can't focus on breathing without addressing stability of the pelvis and movement of the rib cage, which is movement, which is walking. Similarly, if you try to correct these issues just by movement and exercises without taking into to consideration whether the rib cage itself is positioned, because remember, people are like this. Pelvis is forward and to the right. Upper body is over to the right and kind of turned, is oriented to the right, but they're kind of twisting back to the left to stay, to try to stay straight. But you cannot, if you're in this left AIC, right BC position, trying to work on breathing by itself will not work because you're over on the right side. Trying to just work on a left hamstring or left abductors, glute medius, when your body is still over here, will not stabilize the pelvis on the left side, which means you'll never get the left diaphragm over to the left and position properly to breathe. So without confusing the issue any more than I might be, the point is you cannot only address one or the other. They have to be at the same time because all the muscles involved in compensatory breathing and the muscles involved in compensatory movement are the same. And once you're compensatory too much in one of those areas, you'll be compensatory in the other area. Because again, even though they're not coupled one for one, they are intimately linked through muscular connection. So there's no way you can just work on movement without addressing breathing mechanics and there's no way you can just work on breathing mechanics without addressing stability of the body that can move without compensation. Otherwise, the whole thing falls apart. Nothing's going to work. So hopefully that explains 
why uh, the two have to be worked on at the same time, why you can't just do exercises without the breathing aspect, and why working on just breathing without proper technique and position of the body uh, will not work either.